We're ready to visit the last two letters in our CRUD acronym, updating and deleting records. One of the first things you'll learn as a professional developer is that requirements change. This isn't always a bad thing, but it does mean that we need to have flexibility. As an example, originally, password requirements might allow a user to enter anything they want. But then we learn that the users are actually entering some pretty weak passwords, such as a child's name. So the decision is made to add additional password validation. Now we must require that a password meet a minimum number of characters, contain at least one number and one special character, and not contain the username. Not only do we have to change the code that specifies these requirements, we also need to be able to update the data in the database. Sometimes updating is not enough. Sometimes we want to remove entries completely. For example, spam. It doesn't matter if it's spam email or spam comments on a blog. Nobody likes spam. Automatically filtering spam can be helpful as well, but we don't want to leave that spam indefinitely taking up space. Instead, we want to remove that spam completely. We're all human, and as humans, we all make mistakes. We need to be able to fix our mistakes by updating or deleting some information that was previously entered. Whatever the case, updating and deleting are an integral part of maintaining data. So let's start exploring these concepts by updating our list of projects. The first thing we need to do is make our project list clickable. Open projectlist.php and find the list item. Then we add a href equals project.php question mark id equals. Then we'll add the item project ID and finish our tag. Then we need to close our A tag. Now open project.php and we'll add the code we need to accept that ID. If is set get ID Project ID equals filter input, input get, ID, filter, sanitize, number, int. We're going to use that ID to pull the project details using our get project function. This will return an array of all the project details, so we can use the built in list function to return those array values into individual variables. Project ID, title, and category. We're going to get project, then we'll use our project ID. Project ID is redundant in these two lines, so we can actually combine them into one line. We'll take our filter input from this line and use it in the call to our function. Then let's remove that line. Let's update the header text to show if we're adding or updating a project. If not empty, project ID, then we know we're updating a project. Else, we're going to add a project. We set up our task form to show user supplied variables as values in the form. So let's do the same thing here. Up with our page variable, let's add an empty string for the title and the category. Now we can use those variables for field values. Let's copy the code from our task.php file.
if category equals billable, then we want to select this billable item. Copy for charity and personal. And add our title. Now we need to add a hidden field with our project ID. Let's go down to the Submit button. Right before the Submit button, let's add if not empty project ID then we need a new input type equals hidden name equals ID and value equals our project ID Because I surrounded this in single quotes, I need to make sure my project ID is outside my quotes. Let's preview these changes in the browser and see what we have so far. Select Projects in the navigation, and this takes us to the Project List page, where we can select a project. This takes us to the Project page with the project details filled out. However, if we submit the form, it creates a duplicate project because we haven't changed our function to allow for updating. So let's go back to project.php. Let's update our post section. First, we need to grab the project ID from the form. Change this to post. Another nice feature of using the filter input function is that the function will return null if the filter input value is not set. So we don't need to worry about any extra conditionals. Now we can pass that project ID to the add project function. Finally, we're ready to update our add project function. We want to accept an optional project ID. Then we need a conditional so we know which type of SQL statement we'll be using. If project ID then we're going to be using an update. So SQL equals update projects set title equal placeholder category equals placeholder where project ID equals placeholder. Else, we're going to use our insert statement. Our update statement includes one more placeholder than our insert statement, so we need another bind value. If project ID and this is an int. Let's go back to the browser and try that update again. This time, the project details are updated instead of adding a new project. 